today we're here at Denver School of Metal Arts and I'm going to show you how to connect your hose, your nozzle and the handpiece for a smith acetylene torch so you can get set up to do your silversmithing work. This torch is very good for silversmithing because it has ambient air and not forced oxygen. It has a lower temperature heat but it has a larger flame and that's better for silversmithing as opposed to goldsmithing. So we just have the one hose and one regulator uh, because there is no oxygen element in this system. So the first thing we're going to do is put the nozzle on the handpiece. It's just a simple handpiece with one knob to control the flow of the gas. Uh, there are a variety of nozzles that you can get for this torch. This is one of the smaller ones and is probably not the best for most silversmithing operations. This is the next size up. It's a number two and it is very good for most silversmithing operations. So this particular nozzle has a little o-ring, a couple o-rings inside and so the nut needs to be pushed down onto the threads and then turn to tighten it up. The uh, fuel is going to come through the hose, through the handpiece, and as it passes this orifice, these couple of orifices on the nozzle, it's going to pick up ambient air and it's going to make a nice clean torch tip out at the end of the nozzle. And you'll be able to solder with that. So your assembly should have, you just want to hand tight and then give it a slight crank with the with a wrench. Your uh, hoses always come with two fittings of course. This fitting is notched. Anytime you see a notch on a brass fitting it means that it's fuel and it's a reverse threat. This end is going to go on the regulator and as a reverse thread it's lefty tighty not righty tighty. So you hand tighten that and then give that a little twist with your wrench and you're good to go there. The other end is also a fuel end of course and it's notched as well and it's going to go on the hand piece and lefty tighty. If your threads have some gunk in them, uh, some residue of the fuel or something like that, you can brush those out with a steel brush, clean those threads up, and your a nut will, will attach itself uh, much more smoothly. If you get to a place where you see you still have some exposed threads, but you can't hand tighten it anymore, you probably want to get out your wrench. If you've cleaned it already, get out your wrench and tighten it the rest of the way because it wants to be tightened. There's always a little bit of thread left but not anything like half or something like that. So we're going to wrench this and tighten it up a little bit more and you're set and ready to go. This knob of course controls the flow of the gas. You will use that when it's all set up with the torch. So this is really all we need to do to assemble the nozzle, the handpiece, the hose, and we've set it on the regulator. We will attach the regulator to the tank and we will check for leaks in the next segment. We've now moved over to the acetylene tank. This is commonly known in the industry as a B tank. It's a very common size. It can be exchanged at any welding supply place. It can be purchased and exchanged at the Naja Tool and Supply. And this system, as we said before, is acetylene only. There's no oxygen bottle that goes with this system. The next thing we're going to do is attach the regulator to the acetylene tank, and so we'll be able to have a fuel source. Uh, I always do this on the floor as opposed to on a desk or a bench. Just uh, It's more stable. Uh, if it, the tank were to happen to fall, it wouldn't have as far to fall and I just feel like it's more secure. So the first thing I want to do is brush the fitting on this tank, these threads. And I have a file card 
that's typically used for the files, the same files that you use in your metal smithing work. This brush works real well on the threads because it's a, a short, stiff steel brush. And this just, this, I do this just because sometimes these threads are gunked up a little bit and uh, it just keeps them from possibly leaking. Gunk builds up on these threads over time and I found that uh, in the past if I had a leak it was usually a matter of taking the, the uh, regulator off, brushing the threads, putting it back together. So I'm avoiding that step now. We have our fitting. It's real obvious there's only one place for it to go. This fitting does not have the notches in it, so it's a straight righty-tighty kind of system. I hand tighten it first. I like to try to leave my regulators back at a little bit of an angle, just because it's easier to see. I don't have to bend down to really get a good look at the, at the regulators. So again, the, the needles are on zero and the pressure is off the system. I've got it hand tightened and I'm going to give it a little snug and tighten it up. If by chance when you're putting this together, especially when you're at the hand tight stage, if you see that the regulator is, you think when the nut is tight but the regulator is still moving, it's loose, it's not tight. You will need to tighten it down until it's, it's uh, not moving anymore. And if you can't do that by hand, you certainly can do it with the wrench. And so just tighten it however you have to until this is nice and secure. So now we have our regulator assembled on our torch, on our tank. Handle is on the hose. And this is where it gets really important. The most important thing besides not having leaks in this system is taking care of your regulator. Like I said before, this is a very nice regulator. It's rather expensive and it is, it is delicate if it's not taken care of properly. And by properly I mean the pressure that's on the system. So now we're at the part where our assembly is done and we need to turn our system on and we need to do that properly because if we don't we will damage the regulator and that is controlled with this knob. This knob controls the pressure and that's controlled by a diaphragm that's inside the regulator. If I have pressure on this diaphragm when I turn the tank on I'm going to blow out that regulator and it's damaged beyond repair and you have to buy a new one and that's expensive. So I always make sure in the beginning before I do anything, after the assembly of course, that this is loose, that there's no pressure on the system. And as you can tell, both volume and pressure are at zero at this point and the knob is loose. So now it's safe to turn the tank on. I turn it on with the key. I turn it on a quarter turn. You don't need to turn it on three or four times or three or four turns, a quarter turn is as much as it's going to open anyway. Always keep your key tied to the neck of your tank so that you don't lose it or misplace it. You can tell that the, the needle on the volume gauge rose up to tell us what volume we have. We know we have enough gas to work for, on our projects and the pressure gauge is still at zero because we've got no pressure on the system. So now it's safe to turn the key down and give the system some pressure. We want to do that slowly again to take care of the uh, diaphragm. So we just turn it until the needle rises up to wherever we want it set depending on the nozzle on the handpiece. And now we're ready to begin. Well we have one more, one more procedure and that's to check for leaks. We can't check for leaks until we have pressure on the system because we're going to check with leaks by soaping the system and this is just plain old kitchen soap, a simple toothbrush and a little bit of water. And now that we have pressure, if we have a leak, the, the uh, soapy water will bubble and it will tell us that we have a leak. 
No leak there. I've never found a leak at the base here, but I check them anyway. Basically you want to check all of your fittings. Anywhere you made a fitting, and even of course some places where you didn't, you want to check for a leak. And a leak is going to be very obvious. It's going to bubble. Like these bubbles are all dissipating. They're not growing. They're not expanding. Some bubbles are larger. Some bubbles are smaller. Maybe I'll see if I can show you a bubble here. That's a leak. They're not always that big and glorious. Sometimes they're little tiny, uh, quick bubbles, but they're always obvious. So now, if you have that, you just snug it back up, or snug it up more, check it again, and you're nice and tight. We made a connection over here on the hose. nice and snug. We made another connection over here on the handle. You don't want to over tighten these brass fittings because they're relatively soft and if you're constantly cranking them down they will begin to strip and they won't be any good anymore. So if you have a leak, snug it up if after you've snugged it up it's still leaking, maybe try it one more time, just a little bit more tight. And then if it's still leaking, then you've got a problem and you should take it apart and, and back off and start with something else. There's one more thing I want to show you on this tank. All B tanks have this, and it's a pop-out valve. It's a little lead insert. And it's always on the, on the neck, on the back of the neck. And sometimes it's flush in the neck, sometimes it's raised out like this. But what this is, is a safety valve. If your shop begin, it catches on fire and this begins to get hot, that safety valve is going to blow out before the tank blows up. So, um, you know, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's better than having an exploding tank. And over the years, I've seen a couple of these with leaks, very rarely but enough to where I still always check them. And that one looks good. And this one you're just going to get a little bitty tiny bubbling out of there. There's never a big bellowing bubble. So now we're good to go. We know we're safe. And we can start on our projects. So you've probably all lit the torches in one situation or another. You know that this knob on the torch is what lets the gas out as the gas is passing these orifice it's picking up oxygen and making a good flame and then this is your striker that you light the torch with different kinds of strikers this is the kind that comes with this system so we've gone through we've worked on our projects we're done for the day and it's time to shut our system down this knob is off so the first thing we want to do is close the gas so there's no more gas coming out of the tank and into the regulator. That didn't change any of the needles at this point. The next thing to do is bleed the line. And as I mentioned earlier, this is first and last. We're not to last yet, so we don't want to take the pressure off. If we took the pressure off, there wouldn't be any pressure to push the gas out of the line. We couldn't bleed the line. If you want to bleed your line under ventilation, which is a good idea, you should probably do that. I don't have that ability right here, right now, so I'm just going to let it out into the air. There's not much gas in the line. I don't feel there's any danger in doing this, but certainly it would be preferable to do it under ventilation, as all your soldering is better done under ventilation. You can see now that your needles are going down. Your volume's going down, your pressure's going down, and, you're, and you're, you don't have any other gas in the system. Everything is in the tank. There's no gas in the line, there's no gas in the regulator. 
turn your knob off to shut this down just in case something were to leak. Now, the last thing we do is take the pressure off. With this pressure off, if we come in tomorrow and we forget to check the pressure, we've saved ourselves from ourselves by having this pressure off and so when we turn the tank on we're not going to blow out the regulator. Very important. First and last. Mm -hmm.